Hey folks, it's Beth Wright and I'm providing you a short and sweet but hard to beat podcast for chapter 47 for unit 1 of NUR 236. So I just want to say again, be sure to look at your objectives and the exemplars for the uh, chapter because that's what the test questions come from. And so this particular unit deals with a couple of medicines that deal with the GI tract and the uh, genital urinary tract. So we're talking about anticholinergic medications and I know you've had these before. So we're just going to do a quick overview here. These are medications that affect the body as blocking or opposing the parasympathetic nervous system. And so we refer to them as parasympathetic, uh, parasympathetic, parasympatholytics, anticholinergics, or cholinergic blocking. Sorry about that. I had to get started on that first word. And it blocks the action of acetylcholine on the parasympathetic nervous system. So we know that, paras that the acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter, very important one, that exerts the, um, on the uh, muscuranic and nicotinic receptors. And with your muscuranic receptors, they are located in most of your inter internal organs, such as your heart, your lungs, the GI tract, and the GU tract. And when activated by acetylcholine, the affected cells may either be excited or they may inhibit uh, in their function. The nicotinic receptors are located in your motor nerves and skeletal muscles. And when activated by acetylcholine, the cell membrane uh, responds, depolarizes, and produces muscle contraction. Uh, so anticholinergics block the action of the acetylcholine on the parasympathetic nervous system. So it blocks all those actions that we just reviewed. So the actions of uh, anticholinergics, we, with the central nervous system, we initially start with the stimulation of the CNS uh, central nervous system, but then it becomes depressed. Um, it increases the heart rate, and we have bronchodilation and decreased secretions. We have uh, antispasmodic uh, effect on the GI tract and the bladder. And we have a madriatic and cycloplegia effect, and that's dealing with the eyes. The madriatic causes the dilation. Uh, one way to remember that is my, what big eyes you have with the big, with the my before madriatic. Uh, cycloplegia is a paralysis of the ciliary muscles in the eye. And then we have a miscellaneous actions that decreases secretion, the salivary sweat glands. It relaxes the ureters and the urinary bladder detrusor muscle and the smooth muscles in the gallbladder and the bile duct. So that's a lot of different action that those anticholinergics um, can cause the body. Um, when you look at that miscellaneous part there, uh, one thing that we, you might have heard this before, or uh, with the eyes as well, um, with anticholinergics, you can't see, can't spit, can't pee, can't, we'll say have a bowel movement. So if you can kind of keep that in mind, because as you see, all of those symptoms there or actions of an anticholinergic we can't see because of the madriatic and cycloplegia we can't spit because it decreases the secretion we can't pee because of the uh, urinary bladder being um, affected and then we can't poo because of it drying up uh, everything there. 
So your exemplars for this, uh, they're referred to as anti-secretory or antispasmodics for the GI tract, the dicyclamine uh, hydrochloride and your glycopyrrolate uh, are your two medicines for the GI tract. And these are the exemplars that you need to know about. Be sure to look and review about all the things, uh, adverse effects, administration, nursing implications, um, how to evaluate, you know, effectiveness, that kind of thing. Um, so with your dicyclamine hydrochloride, its job is to relax the GI smooth muscle and it's used mainly for irritable bowel syndrome. Um, your glycopyrrolate is used to decrease the salivary and sweat glands um, and you'll see this used uh, sometimes preoperatively to uh, help decrease secretions. Uh, also, I've used it in hospice on patients before uh, to help with decreasing secretions with uh, patients at the end of life who have what we call the death rattles. Um, your GU medications are used uh, for um, urinary incontinence and uh, that's the oxybutynine, the solif uh, solif let's see, solifens solifenison, uh, tolteridine is your other one there. And it um, is used to uh, the ureter and the urinary bladder relaxation for an overactive bladder. And so you've seen those commercials, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. And that's what it's used is for urinary uh, incontinence. Be sure again to look at your adverse effects of those meds uh, and uh, any kind of nursing implication with respect to those, any contraindications, uh, and how do we know the meds are working. Okay, I've got a sample question I want to work through with you on this particular unit. So a client has taken prescribed dicyclamine hydrochloride for two days. So right there in the stem of that you have to know what is dicyclamine for? Uh, what do we use that for? What's the indication? And so the rest of the question is asking which finding would indicate therapeutic effect uh, has been obtained? So again you got to know what it's what it's used for, what the medication is indicated for. Um, and in the, this is an evaluation question, so we've got to, you know, determine which one of those choices uh, gives us the clue to therapeutic effects of this medicine. So if you look at A, capillary refill time is greater than four seconds. So um, really this medication has nothing to do with capillary refill time necessarily. This medication is used for uh, your GI tract uh, to help with your uh, settling down the stomach for uh, smooth, you know relaxing the GI smooth muscles. Um, so capillary refill really would not have anything to do with that. Um, moisture of oral mucosa for B. Okay, you know that these are anticholinergics and they're going to dry out instead of causing moisture. So we know that that B is not uh, indicated with this medicine. Bowel sounds 70 to 80 per minute. Now that is a bunch of bowel sounds and that's not a good thing. Uh, it means uh, the bowel's over time, working overtime if they're doing if it's 70 to 80 per minute. And then D, disc, abdominal discomfort complaints are less frequent than uh, date of admission. And that's what we want to see. Uh, that one is the correct choice on this because this medicine is used to help settle the stomach down and it has indeed done that. Okay, this concludes your podcast for this medication or this unit.